Hello, I'm Jason Harrelson with Harrelson Trumpets, and today we are going to be covering a myth that I've been hearing for 30 some years and, uh, and discuss how and why it's not true, and we'll discuss what is true and why. Um, so this is the myth that heavy bottom caps will make a trumpet sound darker. And actually it's two myths, because the other myth that's somewhat related is that heavy bottom caps will change the slotting of certain notes. Now, neither one of these things are true, but I'll explain how and why. A lot of people have this perception and they're not really looking for the right words to describe what they're feeling. So let's jump right in. Uh, I've got this beautiful VPS Summit Trumpet. This is a T3 model, so it's got a lot of fun stuff on it. I'm really just holding this trumpet to show you the bottom caps and illustrate how and why the bottom caps are an integral part of the design, the design of this trumpet and how they can help other trumpets as well. Now, I'm not gonna play any instruments today. You can play them on your own, um, but I, I technically I can't play trumpet right now. Otherwise, I'd demonstrate this. The truth is if I did demonstrate it, it's really hard to pick up the reality of what's going on on a little cell phone microphone. So I encourage you to come here to Harrelson Trumpets. Our next open house is September 10th and 11th and uh, you can fly in or drive, or if you're in Colorado, it's pretty easy to get here. But uh, a lot of people are picking up flights that are like two to $300 round trip. It's a great time to come in because September, the weather's great, and uh, we just have a ton of fun here at the open houses. And you can try a set of uh, bottom caps or top caps, or pick up some finger buttons or stems, whatever you want, you can try it all here, and you can feel it for yourself. And you know, I might even have the, um, Spectrum analyzer set up so you could even measure the difference and then you can really see it for the naysayers and the doubters out there right now I'll just say this even though you're watching this video and you're like, oh wow I can't wait to hear what he has to say or you can't wait to disagree I've already posted the proof for many years of how this works and you can see it I've actually done spectrum analyses on this actual effect with bottom caps and I've released them to the public for years So those videos are out there you can find them um, and you can see a lot of that in my blog as well. All right, so we've got half inch bottom caps on this Summit Trumpet. I'm gonna hold it up close so you can see them. They're this size. They're not real heavy. They add a little bit of weight and a lot of people get fixated on that word weight. Um, a lot of people look at this trumpet and say, oh man, that thing must weigh eight pounds or 12 pounds. It weighs three pounds, so it's not a heavy trumpet. It's heavier than a Bach or a Yamaha or a Schilke. But the reason this trumpet is heavier is because I added inertia strategically to increase the bell resonance. So we have something that we work by here at Harrelson, which is maximum bell resonance. We call it MBR. And MBR is the maximum amount of energy we can get to the bell so that it can resonate more than those other brands. So our bells do resonate more than pretty much any other brand out there because of MBR technology and standing wave efficiency technology and they're related to each other. So essentially what I wanna do is prevent the standing wave energy from converting into motion of the actual instrument itself until it gets to the bell. So if I can find a way to preserve as much energy in the standing wave as possible until it gets here, then I'm gonna have more energy going to the bell, more resonance because we've engineered and designed everything to do that. Now, how are bottom caps related? Well, in reality, on a Harrelson trumpet, they're really not related uh, on this one, on this summit. Now, if we were looking at um, a lighter wave horn, like this X-series trumpet, the bottom caps are gonna have more of an effect. Same thing with this one and that one, but a lot of the others, like that gruff gravity, and this Muse trumpet and the Summit one, a couple Summit ones and that Summit. Bottom caps really aren't gonna make a huge difference on those instruments. I'm gonna explain why. So when you add mass to a trumpet, then the goal should be to reduce the amount of antinodal vibration. So when you play a note, let's say you play the final metal, this, the very middle of that waveform is exerting pressure on the tubing from the inside out. And we can measure this as low and high pressure zones. So uh, let's say we just played the fundamental, the center of the horn, wherever that might be, the center of the tubing, um, is going to 
vibrate the most. And when it vibrates, or when it has that high pressure energy, it sets the, the tubing or the instrument into vibration. So that transfer of energy from sound wave to vibration is what robs your sound wave from energy. And it makes things harder to play. When this happens as you play higher and higher partials, then you get more and more of these anti-notes and the problem becomes bigger, a much bigger problem. And this is one of the reasons that the piccolo trumpet is so easy to play compared to the B flat or C trumpet when you're playing in the upper register. It's because it's a shorter instrument, it has fewer anti-notes because you're playing lower partials. So um, basically everything's shifted up an octave on that instrument, but the number of partials is shifted down an octave. So on the piccolo or shorter instruments, they are easier because you have less of this effect. And uh, we're gonna talk about it. And it's a lot of fun to really dive into the physics and get to understand how and why this stuff works. So bottom caps on this trumpet, I say aren't that important, but if you were to put them on a Bach or a Schilke or even a lot of Monet trumpets because Monet trumpets have them, if you were to take them off of a Monet trumpet, a standard weight Monet, then it is going to have some energy loss um, and that transfer is gonna to happen to where the valve casing themselves and even the pistons are gonna vibrate more. And you can test that. Uh, originally when Monet first offered their trumpets, they had O-rings and they talked about tightening them and loosening them and all this stuff. Um, I don't really buy into that. The bottom caps should be tightened as much as is reasonably tight. They shouldn't be loose ever. And a, an O-ring will prevent some of that tightness. So the best effect is gonna be have, to have them tight. But let's say this was a standard trumpet like a Bach and you did not have heavy bottom caps and you play the instrument and then you report to your friends or family or, or the person that's letting you try them. You say, oh wow, you know, my A above the staff is slotting really hard now, I don't like that. And you also might say, um, it sounds like it deadens the sound. I don't like the sound of it. Or it darkened the sound, okay? So what you are hearing and what you're feeling are legitimate. You really are hearing something different and you are feeling something different. But are you feeling tighter slotting on an A? That's the argument here and that's the real question. And is the trumpet actually getting darker? And the answer is no to both of those. That you are not feeling any different slotting on the A. If the A comes out easier with the bottom caps, then it's not the slotting, it's the stability. And the reason it's the stability is because an A on above the staff on a Bach trumpet, typically that note is really squirrely. And that's because the anti-nodal vibration that happens on a Bach trumpet in different parts of the horn, we get one in the tuning slide and one in the bell crook, and they're really, really uh, high energy um, anti-notes because you're playing higher. And they're positioned just right where that material is thinner on the bends of a Bach trumpet because they're located right there and the note above and maybe one or two notes below, they shift to where there's braces or where you're not right in the middle of the crook. Then the A has always been harder to play. It's a less stable note. When you put the energy in to play the A, if you put the same energy in there as you did the G or the B, then you're not gonna really have a great sounding A because you've always had to overcompensate on that one note. You're putting extra in on that one note. You've done it for years, it's become a habit. Now you put the heavy bottom caps on and you play the A and you say, oh, I can't play this. These caps are terrible. Why are they terrible? It's because you're so used to putting extra energy on the A and now you don't have to that the A sounds very different and it feels different. It has more stability, it's easier to play but you can't turn off those years of training of playing your Bach trumpet. And a lot of you that complain about this are actually people that have been playing the same trumpet for 20 plus years. You say, oh, those bottom caps are horrible because they make a couple notes stand out. Well, what it's revealing is that a couple of those notes were actually always more difficult to play. They were less stable. And once we put the caps on, they became more stable. Uh, the same kind of thing happens when people come in and play a trumpet like the Summit. They'll come in and they'll play the first few notes and be like, whoa, whoa, this horn is all over the place. It feels like everything is really loud and some notes are sticking out. I'm like, okay, I get that, you know, that happens. It's because the notes that are standing out to you on this trumpet are the ones that were less efficient and harder to play on your original trumpet. So this, the, the 
spectrum analysis mapping and efficiency mapping on this trumpet, pretty much all of the notes have the same amount of stability. And because they do, that means you can attack each one of those notes as soft or as loud as you want. And it doesn't require any extra effort to hit one besides another. You just change your airspeed, your air pressure, your lip length. You just set it up for the right frequency and the note will come out. There's no extra energy required to play a double high C on this trumpet compared to a low C. Instead, you just need to put the right input parameters and there's nothing extra about it. So if you play a double high C on a box Strad, it's gonna be a lot of effort and that's because you have so many different anti-nodal uh, pressure points that are exerting pressure that literally the note stability is, is, is very unstable. It's because everything wants to vibrate, nothing is secure, and all of that vibrates before you ever get to resonate the bell. So stability is the word that we want to use. If you are feeling that one note really stands out, like the A above the staff, it's more stable. It's not slotting, because slotting is actually an impedance value, and slotting happens in the mouthpiece and in the receiver and the lead pipe. And most of us, almost all of us, are feeling slotting, the effect of locking into a partial as you go higher or lower, as um, a variable at the mouthpiece gap. So we, we call this the impedance value. And the more distance you have between the end of the backboard and the beginning of the lead pipe, the more you're gonna feel that locked in slotting. And also, if you have a wider diameter, so let's say you play on a real small backboard, then the end of the backboard inside diameter is small, the diameter of the receiver is pretty big, and then the diameter of the lead pipe again is small, that diameter difference from the smallest to the largest also increases the impedance value. It's like increasing gap, only it's doing it um, as the actual inside diameter. So the inside diameter and the length values, how much air volume you have between the backboard and the lead pipe is going to affect slotting. And there really aren't many other things you can do to the trumpet to change slotting. And I know for a fact, you can't change slotting with the bottom caps. So it's a simple case of people using a word where they don't understand what's really happening. Because you felt like it came out really big and bold and hard. So you think, oh, that must be more slotting. Well, no, it's actually more stability. In other words, your trumpet was more responsive on that note than it had been before. Now, if you learn to play with the heavy bottom caps, you don't have to put all that extra effort in every time you play an A. You can forget about that extra work, um, but there still are gonna be other notes on a Bach trumpet that have this issue. And that's why we'd have to put lots of different um, inertia adding products on your trumpet to really solve all the problems. Um, and even if you did a lot of them, I don't know if you'd solve all of them. It's better just to engineer it to not have that problem in the first place. But either way, if you're adding bottom caps, this is the effect we have. Now let's go to the tone color, because a lot of people say the tone color is changing dramatically. All the, the tone sounded dead with bottom caps, the heavy bottom caps, or it sounded too dark. Um, how can the bottom caps change the actual tone quality? Well, the reality is, it can't. They cannot change the tone quality. They change the efficiency value, or in other words, the amount of energy that's in your standing wave will be increased on certain partials with heavier bottom caps. Now, it's not gonna solve everything. There'll still be partials that have problems. That's why we offer top caps and finger buttons and stems, but even then, you still can't solve all those problems. I will be the first person to tell you a mod kit is not going to be the perfect solution to solve all the problems in your trumpet. It isn't. That's why we don't charge a fortune for them, you know? Right now on our website, a raw brass mod kit for most makes and models is still on sale for 100 bucks. That is literally like $150 less than we used to charge. They're, the price is going down because they're easier and easier for us to make. They're still very high quality, the same quality we've always offered, but the reason we're reducing the price is because they aren't so important and thousands of people are playing on our mod kits. They help, but they're not gonna solve every problem. If you wanna solve every problem um, in terms of efficiency values on your trumpet, then you're just probably gonna have to get out of the standard trumpet because uh, the standard instruments just are designed to be put together as quickly and as inexpensively as possible. And those fabrication techniques um, 
they bring the price down, but they also are at the expense of the playability of the instrument. So now how can the tone quality be affected by bottom caps? Well, it isn't, but your perception of the tone quality definitely is. So when you put heavier bottom caps on, you're going to have a higher efficiency value. What is sent out the bell, what is projected, is more sound than before. When you hear that more sound, depending on what your room looks like, how the room uh, reverberates and resonates, if anything in there resonates, um, you are gonna hear more or less than you did before. A lot of rooms are very dead. A lot of you are playing in your living room with curtains and, and carpet, or you're playing in a basement or a bedroom or even a practice room. All those spaces were designed to absorb the sound. For those of you doing that, you are going to hear less when you put the bottom caps on or a full mod kit. That is because you're getting more projection and that sound is going further away from your ears. It's being absorbed by other things and the ratio of projection to absorption and reflection is thrown off. So you'll hear less and it may sound more dead. But is it more dead? It isn't. In fact, what happens is for every note, it might be a little brighter or darker to your ears and that's simply because depending on where that anti-note was subduing the actual note, you are now getting more of it out. And on a spectrum analyzer, what you see is a higher amplitude of most of the partials. So a higher efficiency trumpet isn't going to sound really any different from a low efficiency trumpet, as long as they both are high enough efficiency to play. Um, but instead, you're going to have less and less amplitude of the partials, and it tends to be based on where they were. So one note could literally be brighter, the next note could be darker in perception. Um, it really depends on where the anti-nodes are. But if you measure it with a spectrum analyzer, and also rem remember it, it depends on the room. If you measure it with a spectrum analyzer, basically what you see is either you have higher amplitude of most of the partials, or you have less. It's not like some stick out. And the reason certain ones aren't sticking out is because what determines the tone quality, the actual amplitude and overtone series, is the tapers and the volume, air volume of your mouth, the mouthpiece, the lead pipe, the bell. Those tapers are what control the actual tone quality. And a bottom cap is not gonna change that. The bottom cap is simply going to adjust the efficiency on some partials, not even all of them. So you're not really going to be hearing that huge difference, but why do we hear darker or brighter? Well, it usually has to come to, it comes down to what kind of room you're playing in and what note you're playing. Some notes may sound a little brighter, some may sound a little darker. Remember, it's because those were the deficient notes before you added the mod kit. Some notes will sound exactly the same. They just might be a little easier to play. But at the end of the day, adding the bottom caps makes everything easier to play unless there's no anti-note in the valve set area. And there are a few notes that there aren't. So hopefully that helps. Let me say one more thing. If you're in a really uh, great room with acoustics that bounce back the sound to you, there's a lot of reverberation in the room, like this room I'm in right now, then you are most likely going to experience the trumpet is louder, it projects more. And that is why we can explain how some people will say, oh, it deadened the sound, or it didn't do much for me. And other people will say, oh, it was so dramatically different. It's usually because it all comes down to perspective. If we were all in the exact same room in the same setting with the same instrument, almost all of you would agree that what I'm saying is true. But because you're in different places and different times, and you also have different biases, you may or may not feel that. So what I try to give you every single time is unbiased information rather than opinion. Would I want you to buy one of my horns? Of course I would. But the thing is we always have a, a pretty lengthy wait list for our horns. So I'm not like out there begging people to buy my horns. Right now I just counted, I have 57 orders for trumpets. So it's not like that's the goal. My goal isn't to sell a, a million trumpets, I'm not going to. My goal is to help give you guys a $100 mod kit if you wanna increase your efficiency, your projection, and stability of a lot of the notes on your instrument. That's it. I mean, you think I'm making a lot of money off of a $100 mod kit, I'm not. I just wanna earn your trust in buying and playing the mod kit so you come here and eventually try other things because our mouthpieces were designed with a lot more technology and our instruments more than that. 
So my goal is really to give everybody the opportunity to experience how and why standing wave efficiency and maximum bell resonance work. That's it. So just remember, uh, when it comes down to testing these kinds of things, try to find the right words that describe what's really happening. The word stability, how stable is the note? Can you attack it very softly and, and at different um, dynamic levels? That would really determine what kind of stability you have. If it's slotting, if you want to use the word slotting, then compare it to the opposite, which is flexibility. If you feel like the A is really slotting hard, then try to slip off the A and go down to the G with one and two, and the B above it with one and two, right? Or you can do those third finger, right? Or you can even play the A second finger, and you can slide around from the A to the B to the C sharp above it. If you feel like the A is locking in really, really hard, then that would be slotting. But if you feel like the A is just easy to play and you can slide around, then that's stability. So we, we can adjust the slotting and the flexibility other ways, but it really can't be adjusted here. And then the tone quality side of it, if you really are unsure of what's happening with the tone quality, almost all of us have mobile phones today, most of them are smartphones. You can download several different apps that will give you the ability to do a rough spectrum analysis on your own, and I challenge you to just record it. Record the spectrum analysis on the A and the notes around it, and see, did that tone, qual that tone color really change much from the other notes around it? Take the caps off, try it again, and see if it's the tone quality or if it's the amplitude. So I hope that you got a lot from this video. I really enjoy uh, dispelling myths and also giving you guys the information, the education, and uh, just trying to help you. And you know, I didn't learn all this in my basement or anything. I mean, I, I actually went to school for it. I went to school for um, physics and math and trumpet performance, and I did uh, an independent study on brass acoustics with an acoustician from Yamaha. You may have heard of that company, and uh, they really know what they're doing there. I have a, a ton of respect for Yamaha, and that was literally almost 30 years ago that I did that. So I've been working on it ever since. And brass acoustics is a huge passion of mine. Making music is a huge passion. Inventing solutions, another passion. Biking, skiing, hiking, anything else, those are my passions too. But what I'm trying to share with you guys is the stuff that you would have to spend years to learn. And I hope that this becomes common knowledge and we can dispel the myths that bottom caps can somehow change the tone quality or the slotting because it really doesn't have any effect on either. Let's remember that we're subjective human beings. We need to find the correct terminology and words and descriptors to communicate with other people so that we're talking about the same thing because that is so important. If we can just communicate, we're probably all gonna take that bar and raise it, but also give everyone the opportunity to get there. So I wanna thank you for joining us. Remember, we do have another open house in September, September 10th and 11th. You can register on our website, whyharrelson.com, and we will have open houses in October, November, and December. So we have a lot of opportunities for that coming up. I'll see you next time.